Offense of the Year in college football and the man who made the catch, Ricky Pearsall, joining us uh, from the University of Florida. Ricky, I, how many times have you seen that s since the Charlotte game? Yeah, many times. I've seen that play many, many times. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I, I'd rather see that than dropping a, a pass in the end zone to, to win a game. So I, I know that you're, you're pretty happy with that. But uh, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think that maybe maybe Graham overthrew it. Uh, what was the conversation like after you made the catch? Yeah, I think it was a pretty short conversation with it on the field. He was just really amped up for me. But we talked about it a lot after the game. We met up after the game. We usually do that. And we were talking about the play. He's like, I did not think you're going to go up and get that. But I ended up making the play, so. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd be too happy with him, considering uh, you, you gave these two uh, <laughs> defensive backs an opportunity to take your head off. But uh, you came up, you, uh, you came up, you came up rather quickly. I guess the adrenaline must have been pretty, pretty good. No, for sure, my adrenaline was definitely up, especially because my dad was fourth row, so I had to get up. <laughs> I and, had to. <laughs> and your your dad, uh, from what I understand, has uh, not only been your dad, uh, but he's been coaching you since you were barely out of the crib. Oh, yeah, for sure. We started at a young age. Uh, he played college ball at NAU, so it started from a young age, man. He introduced me to the game when I was around six years old, and from there, you know, we never stopped. We'll go back to Florida in a minute, but I want to talk about what's recent because we're, we're getting close to the draft, five weeks away, and, uh, I mean, the headlines about you are pretty phenomenal. Uh, you are just racing up the draft after a senior bowl. You've looked great in so many different uh, settings. Uh, take us through... Uh, since we last saw you at the end of the year, uh, what you what have you been doing? And, and uh, I'm sure you're pretty pleased with what everybody is saying. Yeah, for sure. Um, I first headed over to Exos in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I've been working with a guy named Nick Hill. He's over there. He's really good. Um, and then for the combine process, we've just been working on our 40 starts. We were really nailing on that. And then obviously everything that comes with the combine, with the route stuff, the position work. We had a uh, gold feet. His name's T.A. He came over to Phoenix, too. He'd fly out and work with all the receivers. So it's been a lot of good work. They got basically everything you need over there from nutrition to PT to all the work that you need to be doing. So I just want to say shout out to Exos over there in Phoenix area. What is that like when, uh, I mean, you've, you've been through, I mean, the senior bowl is pretty intense. And then, you know, you, you, do, you deal with pro days coming up in the combine. Uh, I'm sure there is something, there's a preparatory plan on that. But how do, how do you get ready for these things uh, aside from what you normally do? And that's catch footballs. I mean, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a personal element to it. Is there not? Yeah, for sure. There, it definitely is. Uh, the game's 90% mental. So just making sure I get my mental game ready, making sure I'm on top of all my plays. And obviously I think the, the physical stuff is going to handle itself, the, the work you put in, but uh, making sure your mental's right to go out there and perform. We just put up on the screen, you, you, were, you played at, at Arizona State. Uh, a lot of folks were at Arizona State and came into the SEC and did pretty well, uh, including a Heisman winner uh, down in, in Baton Rouge and what, what you accomplished. Let's talk about uh, that, that re-entry into college football a couple of years ago from, from Arizona, where you're from, to Gainesville, which uh, doesn't need uh, much explanation in terms of the, the fervor of football down there. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, coming from the Pac-12 to the SEC is a little bit different, you know. Uh, I would definitely say the front seven is moving a little bit faster. But I, I just want to highlight the traditions and the history, really, of the SEC, that what, what carries with that. And obviously, the University of Florida is a very historic university. So, you know, I can't say enough about the University of Florida. They've done a whole lot for me, and you know, I had fun every time I stepped into the swamp. So, Ricky, there, there, there's so many uh, questions uh, about uh, about – this upcoming season that you you won't be part of because of the schedule, but how would you describe your years there, especially uh, being part of Billy Napier's system? Yeah, man, I enjoyed every part of it, really. Uh, Coach Napier does a fantastic job over there, along with the rest of the coaches over there. They had a really good group of people in my corner, and uh, I can't thank them enough. You know, uh, all the improvement I have had the last two years, um, I owe it all to them. They're very detailed in their work over there. Um, Coach Napier changed the culture, that's for sure. Um, all the guys are just going through another year with him and trusting him more. So we're, we're expecting big things from them coming up. So I want to ask you about that before we get back to the NFL, uh, because uh, you know what the schedule is. It's ridiculous. Uh, everyone has said that. Uh, there's a lot of confusion over how, how Florida ended up with the toughest schedule in the country. But uh, give us a preview of, of what you are leaving behind in Gainesville. Uh, Mertz remains. A lot of young players, uh, a, lot, a lot of talent, but uh, 
the schedule, it seems like uh, it is on everyone's mind. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of talented guys over there. There's a lot of young guys that are up and coming. Um, one of the dudes I was mentoring over there, um, a young guy by Trey Wilson. He's extremely talented. I think everybody should be on him after this season coming up. So, you know, I want to highlight him. He's a tremendous player. And obviously, Graham Mertz is over there, too. He's one of my good buddies to this day. And I, I expected him to have a great season, too, as well. So I expect big things all at the University of Florida. Ricky Pearsall with us. Uh, Ricky, uh, as you leave behind, you're, you're, you're dealing with whatever young player deals with. Uh, you, you, you stayed behind to, to improve your stock, and you did that. Um, what are you, I mean, I, I, I know what I'm reading, uh, but what are you hearing from your, your people in terms of what to expect over these next five weeks? Yeah, I'm hearing all kinds of things, man. But for me, I just got to take it day by day. That's really all I'm thinking about. Uh, when I feel like when you worry too much in the, you know, in the future versus the past, you know, that's when you kind of just build that uh, stress for yourself. So being able just to stay in the moment and be present where my feet are at, that's all I'm focused on and what the work I can handle right now. And you, know, you mentioned the Pac-12. Uh, people, I mean, we live in the SEC uh, on this on this channel, so uh, we're naturally pretty pretty pro SEC. But as you traveled around the SEC, as you met a lot of people. Uh, I, I think the answer is yes, but describe how it helped prepare you for the next level. Yeah, for sure. I think the SEC is probably the closest thing to the NFL level um, when it comes to speed. You know, a lot of guys coming from college going to the NFL, it takes a little bit to get used to some of that speed over there. But I think the SEC is probably the closest thing to that speed. And a lot of uh, scouts that through this time have actually told me that. So that's yeah. helped me. Florida has had it, its share of great, of great wide receivers. Uh, we, we, ha we had one on the screen earlier from old, the old days uh, in, in Doring. Uh, but in terms of the, the wide receivers that you've watched uh, as a younger person and, and admired, and I'm not saying emulate, well, maybe emulate would be the right word, but, but maybe copy is the wrong word. But who, who stands out to you? Who are the guys that you have watched and said, "Man, uh, that guy is is where the ac is is where the action is." No, for sure. There's a lot of good receivers in the NFL right now, um, and I think that's part of being a good receiver yourself. Honestly, is stealing certain things that guys are doing at a high level and having high success with. And you know, I like guys like Justin Jefferson. I think he does it at a really high level. He's really good at in and out of his breaks. He's super explosive at the line of scrimmage. And I like guys like Amari Cooper and Devontae Adams too. And I like to watch their release game and how they use different tempos at the line of scrimmage. Um, guys like Cooper Cup, obviously him filling out the zones and he's a smart guy, good at route running at the top of his route too as well. So there's all kinds of guys I could throw out there that are doing it at a high level, but it's just about watching film and stealing some of their stuff really. Before you go, tell it, take us on the field for a second uh, because we all, you know, we're watching the quarterback. Uh, we don't often see the, the wide receiver in, until the, the play starts to pick up. But what, what is, what, what's going through your mind as, as you run to your position? Uh, what are you thinking about, and what's the most important thing uh, as you're listening to the count? Yeah, there's a lot to it. Obviously, you got to get your play first, and then, you know, your alignment, where that, whatever that's at. And that's when you start um, being able to look at the defense, seeing what coverage you're in, seeing what the corner's leverage is. And, you know, as a receiver at the line of scrimmage with your release, you obviously got to play against the corner's leverage and really get to understand that. And then as far as the route is, there's a lot of different routes that go off based off of coverages. So you got to really understand the defensive side of things. So it's being able to play with your eyes up and seeing everything that's changing ahead because, you know, a lot of defense, uh, especially now, are disguising certain things. Uh, obviously, speed is a, is a big part of it, but, but how much is intuition and just kind of knowing where you are and, and, and feeling what's around you? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think that's probably one of the best attributes as a receiver is just awareness, you know, knowing where you're at on the field and knowing where the sidelines at, too. I mean, that's an obvious one, getting your feet in. So but just being able to know where you're at on the field and having awareness where guys are at, where certain zones are at. Ricky, it's been fun catching up. All the best. We'll be watching in a couple of weeks. And uh, congratulations on an amazing career at the University of Florida. Be well. Thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate you having me on the show. It's our pleasure. Ricky Pearsall, one of the greats this year in the Southeastern Conference, and we'll take a short break. Much more to come right after this. <laughs>